Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at another keyboard from Drop, the Custom 65, or the CSTM 65, because I guess it isn't cool to use vowels nowadays, huh? <laughs> anyway, I had previously taken a look at the CSTM 80, but I purchased it bare bones and selected a different color top because I wanted to match it with my ski data keycap set, so I picked the orange. This time it said pre-order to add a different color case or top. So I went ahead and bought the pre-built version. I did have a couple of coupons um, waiting for me. I do have the drop key, key club, key member club. I forgot what it's called, DKC. So this one, I was able to get at a discount. So it's pre-loaded. I believe it's Gayron yellows or milky yellows and a, the DCD shine through keycap set. I believe. So we're taking a look at it today. I did not keep the CSTM 80. I was kind of miffed about the whole miscommunication about the covers. So on this case, in this case, I, you know, I knew what I was getting into and I just went ahead and bought a pre-built black. Yes, I can get the cases later on, but let's see if this is a good value. It's a $99 pre-built 65% gasket mount with a removable top case so that you can, so I believe it's magnetic, that you can, uh, you know, change out for different ones. I believe they run $25 for plastic and $45 for the aluminum, but don't, don't quote me on that because I haven't kept track with it that much. So let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we have with the CSTM 65. Now, before we take a look at the keyboard, I'd like to see what we have as far as accessories goes. And here, it's all underneath. All right, so we have a user card that gives us all the startup. It should work out of the box with Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. But you do have to, and this is one thing that I do know that you have to. It comes with a, I guess, a closed source firmware. And if you want QMK via, you have to go and download a file and executable for Windows to flash it to QMK via. But that's neither here nor there. Now it looks like we have some extra gaskets. We also have a few extra keycaps, and it does look like it's south facing because the shine through legend is on the front. Oh, it's the Mac keys. All right. So we have the uh, horseshoe switch puller, which I don't know. I personally don't like to use, and a separate keycap puller, which I don't know. I just prefer the double-sided ones, that, but that's just me. And we have a pretty decent uh, USB, A to USB-C braided nylon cable. I'm going to go ahead and leave this stuff down below. I'll set this here. We'll keep this card out just in case. And here we are with the CSTM65. What is it with not using vowels nowadays? Is it supposed to be cool? It looks like, I mean, don't get me wrong, I really like this thick bezel, but one of the first things I noticed when I pull this out is that this cover is extremely flimsy. I mean, I have, I mean, look at that. I, um, I've got a few keyboards with magnetic shrouds, like from CIY, from RK, and they're not this flimsy. I mean, this is, this is something that I feel I could tear with my bare hands, and I don't have that much strength in my hands. It's not a good start. Let's just say that. Um, just out of curiosity, what is the thickness of this? Let's see. So we got about a 2.93 millimeter thickness of plastic there. That is why it's so just, I mean, eek. And we have a fairly standard 65% layout, which you see on a lot of boards and Wait a minute. Ah, oh, don't. So it looks like the USB port is on the PCB. Uh, that's a good way to for the, that, that port to come off and fail at some point. That's just not whether it's going to be on the upward or the downward. There's pressure being put on that. That USB port is being held on to the PCB with solder and having it be part of the PCB instead of a daughter board tells me that they probably went pretty cheaply on manufacturing. 
let's take a look at this keyboard from the inside and see what we see. All right, so we got all eight screws out. Oh my, this is so thin. I'm, I'm sorry, I just wasn't expecting it to be this. This is a, uh, it's, it's just, it's too thin. That is a, uh, just, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Let's see. Basically two millimeters. The case is two millimeters thick. I'm going to assume that this is ABS plastic, but this is just not, I mean, between this and this, these are some cheap, I mean, it doesn't cost too much more to make it a little bit thicker. And I, I just, I don't know. I don't get it. So here we have the keyboard and we can see the gaskets on the top and the bottom. It looks like six of them, but we can just pick it up because the USB port is sitting right on the PCB and that's just, uh, I don't know. Now it does look like we have an ARM STM32 on here, which is nice, but I mean, I just, for a hundred dollars, you would figure that, I mean, you can get aluminum keyboards. Uh, I mean, just as an example here from my hand, here's a Monsgeek M3, I believe. And this one bare bone, well, not the wireless version, the M3 regular, is $99. It's the same price. Now, it is bare bone, doesn't have switches and keycaps, but it's not like we have a full set of keycaps on here and we're using Gitteron Milky Yellows, which are a decent but pretty budget um, switch. So, for this, $99 with some cheap shine through keycaps and a set of Gatoron Milk Yellows, we're only looking at maybe 30, maybe $40 more depending. So it seems to be that they made this keyboard with only profit in mind because the materials and the design is in my opinion, pretty chintzy. Now we do have uh, some foam between the plate and the PCB. And this case, oh, okay, yeah, we do have that's where I was feeling the weight. It looks like we do have an aluminum weight. And that's the, the one thing that's giving, giving this keyboard weight. But other than that, we even have a pretty flexible bottom case. This is just, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't, it's not like I expect the greatest from drop, but this is almost, I don't know. Now, I do like that they have the metal inserts for the screws, so we don't have to worry about stripping any plastic, but I just, between the USB port being on the plate, between the really thin body and cover to the, I mean, basic switches, there's no choices for others, and it looks like we do have an IXPE layer, but that's it. We don't have an IX, uh, we don't have um, PET, we just have IXPE. So, well, at least there's screw on stabilizers, and it does look like we have what appears to be a reset button. Is it a button? Yeah, it's a button uh, underneath the space bar. So, that'll put you into a uh, flash firmware mode. But, let me see these keycaps. Honestly, I'm just not the biggest fan. Of shining through keycaps that's just me let's see what kind of thickness we've got on here 0.9 millimeters i mean seriously less than a millimeter for keycaps they feel street oh yeah these oh, i'll bend this out of shape i feel like i could break it i don't have too many keycaps that i feel like i could break if i just give it enough force especially the condition i have i don't have too much strength in my hands now, at least we do have some foam between the plate and the PCB and the PCB. Oh, that's pretty flexible. That um, feels like a PC polycarbonate plate. And the stabilizers appear to be dry. I don't see 
any lubrication on there whatsoever. Let me see. Let me put this back before it goes wandering off. Yeah, I don't see any lubrication whatsoever on these stabilizers. Although, I mean, they, I think they could use it. They're a bit scratchy. They're not ticking or anything, but they're louder than I would say. Although it could be the keycaps in this in this situation, because they're so thin, it's sounding sounds plasticky to me. Well, I am. <laughs> I mean, to find a gasket-mounted keyboard in 2024 that still has the uh, USB socket on the actual PCB. I don't know. It just seems seems a bit dated to me, in my opinion. Now, the gaskets do have some pretty good flex on there, but again, whether you're going down or you're coming back up against the case, I see that as an issue. I feel that we're going to be seeing a lot of these keyboards with broken USB ports because while solder is there to make a connection, solder is not really strong. It's not meant to really hold anything that's going to be taking any pressure. I mean, besides just the pressure of plugging a, a USB cable in and out, it really isn't meant for any sort of pressures. I'm just not at all impressed. The plasticky from it, I can feel. I, I just, uh, I don't know. I'm, I didn't open the CSTM 80. Something's not going down all the way, and I'm guessing it's going to be one of these gaskets. Oh. Uh, all right. I am not a fan of these gaskets, to say the least. They barely fit onto the plate. I mean, most little bit of pressure, and they're going to come out. So, and they have to fall into this hole, but I think it might be this foam that's causing there's not much room in here at all all right so it's not really friendly for opening it up I don't usually have problems with the foam below because it usually fits quite nicely but this one seems to be just not wanting to cooperate with me it wants to come off right here so let's see if we hold that in place Alright, I think we got it. They appear to be in their proper spots. But it's just kind of like a little nub that sticks out and goes into the case. So, not necessarily my idea of a good gasket design. And it doesn't, like, almost doesn't want to shut all the way now. That's, uh,. That's troubling. Let me go ahead and put these screws back in and close this up before I actually break it just handling it. Because that's how fragile this thing feels. Alright, it does seem like we have a little bit of gap still. A little bit of a gap. So I'm not sure what that's all about. But I wanted to put that back together because I honestly felt like I was going to break it. The body of this is so thin. I say I don't get it, but I do get it. They're just They're going the cheapest amount to manufacture and the most amount to sell so there's more profit to be made now i don't <laughs> i don't condemn businesses that make profit but it's when they're using their name i mean they just got bought by corsair now their previous keyboards yes they weren't gasket mounted and even the v2 versions of like the cstm or the um, the ctrl the ENTR, well, the ENTR is not hot swap. Um, CTRL, there's a few of them. I, I don't remember all the, again, not using the vowels. <laughs> but those are at least, you know, made out of aluminum. They're more solid. And I've modded and bought the uh, aftermarket cases or the, the high profile cases for both my 65% and um, the TKL. And was able, actually able to mod it to sound pretty decent. And it's 
I mean, they're aluminum, so they're nice and hefty. Bought everything in parts and was able to spend, I think, a third of what was originally listed for. So, now granted, it was off of eBay, but everything was new. And a couple of the sellers that I bought from, I think, were just dropped just being resellers of their own stuff. It could be returns. I don't know. But like I said, I was able to build both the 65% um, aluminum in a high-profile case as well as the TKL aluminum in a high-profile case. The TKL actually came out a little bit cheaper than the 65%, but they were about, you know, when it came to just the keyboard itself and the case, I spent less than a third of what it was listed for MSRP. Another thing that I do not like is the fact that without the shroud or the top cover, the keyboard looks too, it looks unfinished. It looks, um, most of the, or all of the shrouded keyboards that I have that have detachable magnetic shrouds work either way. They look good. They hide the magnets underneath the uh, cakes. So that way I can say, hey, I want a floating key design such as this, or I want a sunken key design such as this. But this, usable. It looks like, hey, what you're missing half your keyboard. Whereas other shrouded keyboards actually hide the magnets and the screws or whatever's holding them together so that this looks usable and it looks like a nice um, floating deck floating key kind of style whereas this one does not it doesn't look finished so really it's only really usable or looks usable i mean some might like that i don't know i guess you'd call it industrial but to me it looks unfinished it looks like an incomplete product but with this i don't want to even bend it that much i'm afraid i i'm truly afraid i'll break it this keyboard is way too fragile now It doesn't sound that bad. I will give it that. It it just um <sighs> like let me just for an example take another sixty five percent. Now granted, this one was bare bone, but I got it. Oh, I bought so many of these. I don't think I've paid more than $30 for any of the GMK um, keyboards. Now, this one has a, this is three three mode. It has a pocket for the USB. This one is wired only. Now, this one is plastic. And as you can see, it's similar, except it has only two keys, but it has a screen. Um, but if I were to get a set of shine, front shine through keycaps, I know I'm seeing a few for, say, $15, and I'm pretty sure I can get a set of 70 uh, Milky Gatorons for probably about 15 so so say roughly $30 for the base another $30 for keycaps and switches you know if we're trying to replicate this and I mean I do have some front shine through keycaps and I'm pretty sure they're 1.2 millimeters so they're not as plasticky or as almost pot I actually I know that this keyboard would sound much better with different keys but here we have a GMK 67S with the screen that I have done no modifications to. It's completely stock. And what do I have loaded in here? Let's see what? Oh, I have bubble gums in here. But even if I were to take, let's take some of these bubble gums. Let's take some Gatoron Milky Yellows. You hear that difference? It's not awful, but it sounds a little hollow, a little lifeless. Now here is Milky Yellows. And just to confirm, yep, Milky Yellows and the G, H, and Y. And this is what this sounds like. And this is stock. I haven't done anything to this GMK67S, but load keycaps and switches on it.
these sound much more livelier. I mean, this keyboard sounds much livelier and much better. And I mean, it's almost half the price. I mean, if you if you can find a good deal, you can maybe get the switches for about 12 bucks and maybe get a keycap set on sale, shine through for another 10 bucks. So you're looking at 50 something dollars. So yeah, roughly half half the price. Now, granted, this is from AliExpress and you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. But I mean, if you're in that much of a hurry, well, I guess, you know, you get this one. But my point is that Drop is a bigger company now, especially that it's been bought by Corsair. And for them to put such low quality from the USB port being on the PCB, not on a daughter board, from the plastic of the case being so thin, from the case top three millimeters to the case bottom two millimeters to these shine through keycaps. That I just, I don't know, I guess I, I expected a little bit more from the CSTM without Bow 65. But I just can't see the value when keyboards like this are available at 99, I mean, at below $99. And for $99, I can get a bare bone Mons Geek. A lot of the Mons Geek bare bones are $99. Or if I want to get a 65% aluminum, I can get something like this. This is the um, SK-71 or the AL-71. Um, this sells for under $100. I think I've seen it for $69 at, this, at its lowest. And this is a full aluminum keyboard, three mode. And sounds much better stock. And it's, it's just a better built keyboard. So when I compare this, now this keyboard two years ago, I would have hopped on it. And I mean, I still would have complained about the, the thickness of the plastic, but there wasn't too much available two years ago that would have compared to this. But now when I can find 65%, I mean, there's the, um, the AL66 as well that has the knob um, instead of the screen. So you're missing one key, but you have the knob. That one also runs about $80 or less when I'm on sale. And it comes with decent switches. It comes with the IVX PE as well as PET mod because that's just what's standard nowadays, which I think is great. Some people may not like it, but you can remove it. But at least you already have it on there. Some people, they just love how these keyboards loaded up this way sound right off the bat. And as you can see, there's no flex on the port because the port is on a daughter board. Well, that one is on the PCB. So it just, I feel like Drop is just a couple of years behind. Like this, they had a, an idea for this two years ago, but they just finally got to releasing it and they maybe dropped $10 off the price, $20. I don't know, but it's just, it feels like this is already aged and it was just released. So I just... I have a hard time justifying the value and justifying the purchase, especially when, I mean, when I'm going to buy this keyboard, like I said, uh, bare bone, like I bought, like I said, before I wanted to, I got the CSTM 80 and I bought it bare bone because I was like, I don't need the switches. I don't need the key caps. And I bought a four inch cover, which it said add to cart. Now this one for the, for the colored covers, it does say pre-order which now they're clear. I don't know if they heard my, you know, complaints on my previous video, but they definitely are communicating better. So I did not make the same mistake, but obviously I already knew, but I paid attention and saw that it said pre-order was before it just said add to cart. And then I received my bare bone keyboard without a top cover because I didn't want black. I wanted orange. And I was like, where is, where's my top? Where's the top? And I had to call them or contact them through uh, support. And they told me, oh, well, you have to wait. It ships out in four to six weeks. I'm like, well, that, the cover ships out after the window for me being able to return this one. What if I don't like it once it's fully built? So 
those cases should be available as soon as the keyboard's available. And if they have to wait, then wait to sell the keyboard or make the entire thing pre-order. Because it's like, okay, well, I want it, you know, that particular color. Even if you bought the full kit, but you're like, hey, I'm going to buy the red one or the blue one or the orange one or whatever color. Because you want it to match a particular aesthetic that you're going for. You're going to have to wait. I like to receive my things all in one order. So having half of it pre-order and half of it in stock just seems a little wonky to me. But again, Drop does a lot of things that I just don't understand. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Drop CSTM 65. A 65% wired 67 key mechanical keyboard. It comes with a polycarbonate case and a magnetic shroud. Also includes poron inside of the case and between the PCB and plate, as well as an IXPE sheet. It has a silicone bottom case and a PC gasket mount plate. Has double shot ABS shine through DCD keycaps and side or front cherry shine through. It also includes MAC keys, but does not include alternate keys for the navigation column. It is available with either Gatoron Brown Pros or Gatoron Milky Yellow Pros. It is a 3 and 5 pin south facing hot swap PCB and comes with a 3.9 ounce aluminum weight. In total, this keyboard comes weighing in at 916 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 21 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 31 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 6 degrees. The MSRP on this keyboard is $129, but it was on sale for $99 when it was first released. So yeah, I actually recall that when I bought this keyboard, it was $99, but the retail price of this keyboard is $129, $130 for a plastic keyboard. Now, it is a uh, PC, not ABS, but it's so thin, it's just... I'm, and it's like, it's kind of listless, lifeless. It's not, doesn't have much life to it. I just, like I said, when there's so many great available, even aluminum kits, but even great plastic kits at $99 or below, and those have three modes. They're actually, you know, they have a USB 2.4. They have Bluetooth, not just wired. $130 for a wired, pre-built, thin plastic keyboard with the USB port soldered onto the PCB that, you know, has the chance, runs the risk of definitely getting some damage. I, I'm almost positive I'm going to see stories of people going, my USB port popped off, what do I do? Because solder, unlike welding, solder is there to make an electrical connection. It's not strong. It's not meant to hold pressure. It's not meant to, you know keep things attached it's meant to conduct electricity the usb port being that way i mean it, it 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 does usually have enough strength on there because of the way that it's attached or mounted onto the pcb to withstand the pressure of a pc or the the usb cord being plugged in and taken out but on the up and down i think it's going to be an issue anyway i um i i was hoping that i was going to like this keyboard i'm becoming more and more a fan of 65% um, layouts. TKLs have kind of just been my jam for a while, but it's always TKL with a numpad that has a, a usually a, a volume wheel. But I've been using a lot of 65% lately, and I just, I mean, yes, I use the function keys, but I mean, especially if it's got tap, I'll just set it to F1, F5. So it just makes it a lot easier, um, and it just takes up less space. So um, I was really hoping to like this keyboard. I was hoping to like the CSTM80 because it's a TKL, but again, my issues with the way that it was ordered, and I also, I mean, I found the shroud. I mean, I didn't have a shroud, so it, it, I found it incomplete without a shroud, and I just didn't feel that it was worth it. But had I gotten a shroud, I... I mean, honestly, I'm afraid to even be flexing it this much because I know that if I just give it a little bit, it's going to crack. It's going to break because it's just that 
thin and flimsy. And these keycaps are just, I don't know, they're nothing home, nothing to write home about, in my opinion. So, um, I don't think there's much more to say about this. I don't really want to go off on, on a tirade. I just feel that Drop is kind of selling a keyboard that, at the price and the feature set that it has, would have been great two years ago. But in 2024, I think it's out of place. And I just... I feel bad for the people that are buying their first mechanical keyboard think that this is a good deal because, you know, perhaps they're looking at prices or posts from a while ago and think that this is a good value and then get it and are like, well, what's the big deal? Because I don't think that this gives a good impression of what a good mechanical keyboard should be. And I don't think the value is there. Because like I said, I could get a GMK67, 67S, a GMK87, bare bone. For twenty to thirty dollars, heck, I've seen the GMK sixty sevens, the regular ones with the knob. I've seen them as low, and I've purchased as low as nineteen dollars. I've seen some people buy them for fifteen dollars with no shipping. They waited ten days. Oh well, but fifteen bucks for a three mode gasket mounted PC plate, sound facing. What? I mean, it's just it's insane. So that's the value that you can get. And I mean, I'm positive that this was made in China as well. So it's just drop making what materially is a cheap keyboard and selling it for the maximum profit. Now don't get me wrong. Yes, businesses have to make profit, but when they're making two, three, four hundred percent what it costs them to make, that's being excessive. That's capitalism run amok. And and I just feel that this is going to leave many people with a bad taste in their mouth about what mechanical keyboards can be, especially at this price. And I just I want Drop to do better. I really do. I just I don't feel that this is a I mean, if this was 50 bucks. All right. I mean, 50 bucks fully loaded. Cool. It is thin and everything, but there's some mods that could be done. Who knows? And plus, I mean the thing i'd even find it hard for 50 bucks without the shroud because this doesn't look complete this is not a good design in my opinion because this does this if you take this to work somebody be like did you break your keyboard did you not get all of it what's going on why why is all this bare i mean don't get me wrong there could be an industrial look there's ways that they could have done this to where it still looked cool but looked finished this doesn't look finished it looks like it's incomplete like it's missing something so using it this way i don't think many people will so yeah i i just i don't understand this is 25 dollars. this is a very thin piece of polycarbonate plastic that's been injection molded i mean it's it doesn't weigh an ounce maybe 25 dollars seriously i mean this cost a buck, maybe two to make, maybe another 25 cents to ship. So even say five dollars, they're selling it for 25, 500 percent markup. Really? I, I just, I don't know what to say other than why, why, why would you do this to the community? This isn't this is almost aggressive aggressive to, towards the community. Like, hey, you guys don't know what you want. You want this, and this is how much it costs, and this is a great keyboard for $130 because, I mean, look what you're getting. PCB, $15 maybe. Maybe $20 because it does have an ARM STM, but that only adds a dollar or so. No daughter board, so no extra there. The keycaps, I'm sure they paid way less than $10. The case itself, maybe $10. I mean, just you're looking at $25, $30 total for this keyboard. $130? I mean, that's just, that's an outrageous markup. 100, 150% markup? Okay. I mean, I think 100% markup. I mean, that's when I was in business. I even felt bad about doing 100% market when I sold computers. I usually tried to stick it to 50%. I think Drop can do much better than this. 
I personally don't feel that the investment is worth the product for this keyboard. And that's just, that's my opinion. I know there'll be people that are going to disagree with me, and that's fine. We all have our right to our own opinion. But I'd like to hear what your thoughts on it. I like to get discussion started. I'd like to hear you know, what you think, especially if you own it. Do you think that I'm being a little too harsh? Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to like drop. I'm trying to give drop the benefit of the doubt because I do, I love MT3, though Mateo has gone on now to MTNUs and I haven't gotten to try those yet. Um, I'm a big fan of the keycap sets. And like I said, I got good deals um, buying part, buying it by parts for the the 65% drop CTRL and this drop alt, I believe, for the, the TKL. I might have those over, mixed up, but I was able to get it in parts for both of them for about a third of their retail price. So you could tell that they have a lot of margin. But those, I mean, they weren't gasket mounted. And even the V2 versions of those aren't gasket mounted. They just have a better PCB. So I just, I keep giving drop the benefit of the doubt and drop keeps dropping them all. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the CSTM, the custom 65. What is it with the vowels? Why can't we use vowels anymore? I bet the English language is going to change in 100 years. There won't be any vowels. Like, what are vowels? <laughs> I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and leave you with a stock sound test of the CSTM 65 uh, with the DCD shine through the side um, keycaps and Gatoron Milky Yellow Pros. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I respond to all comments as soon as I can. Sometimes I'm busy. I do have a life and I have kids. But until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.